Hey, hello, welcome again, IoT Magicians. Uh, welcome again in another exciting live demo in front of you. So in today's experiment or in today's learning, we are going to understand how we can establish a two-way communication between two Raspberry Pis. Yes, these Raspberry Pis like maybe mm, version three and above three or any, any of the version you can choose. So how do you make a two-way communication between two Raspberry Pis without you using any third or any external device like uh, no Zigbee in place, no uh, Bluetooth external module, no LoRa, no nothing, no RF device, no IR device. Means we are not using any external device, but still we should be able to make a two-way communication between two Raspberry Pis. So this is one Raspberry Pi as you see here, and this is another Raspberry Pi that you see here. So let me first show you what we are going to learn today's uh, project so that you can uh, stay tuned with me if you find it interesting. So here you see that uh, with one Raspberry Pi, I have one LED here and one push button here. And similarly, we have one Raspberry Pi here and one push button here and this one red LED over there. So what we will do when we'll push this button on this first Raspberry Pi. So this is this is oh, this Raspberry Pi is for Raspberry Pi second, and this is this I will call first Raspberry Pi. So this is first Raspberry Pi, this is second Raspberry Pi. What will happen when you will push the button on first Raspberry Pi, this black button, when you will push, this will send a control to the second Raspberry Pi. And as soon as this second Raspberry Pi will receive the signal from this first Raspberry Pi, it will glow its LED. This, this is the green color LED. So when you push this black button, this green LED will glow here on the second Raspberry Pi. Similarly, vice versa, if you will push this button here, this is the red color button which you see here. When you will push this button, this second Raspberry Pi will send a signal to first Raspberry Pi. And as soon as this first Raspberry Pi will receive the signal, here the red LED will glow. It means like the two-way communication is happening. This is sending some signal, it is receiving and based on that, it is taking some action. So this is just a demo or just, a, you can say, a proof of concept where you can see that we can have a two-way communication between two Raspberry Pi and you can implement it to uh, make any of any kind of your project which you want. So you can send some signal from here, receive there, and then take any action, whatever you want. So let me first show you for that. Let me just uh, switch off my lights of this room so that these LEDs, when they will glow, it will be more visible. Let me switch off my lights quickly. So I think uh, this much is enough. Uh, so we can see that. So this is the second Raspberry Pi. I am pressing the button here. This button, let's see what happens. So you see that when I press the button on this second Raspberry Pi, the red LED on the first Raspberry Pi glows here again. So let me push it one more time. So it will, it, it will toggle the LED on the other side. So you see that when I press this button, it is toggling the LED on the other side. Similarly, let me switch it off again. Similarly, if you will press the button on the first Raspberry Pi, it will toggle the LED on the second Raspberry Pi. Let me show you. So when I will press this, you see that green LED is lighting here. Again, I will push this. So green LED is switched off. So here you are seeing that without using any third, any, any external tool or any external module, we are able to make a two-way communication between two Raspberry Pi. So from here signal goes, this receives, it sends a signal, this receives. So how do we achieve this kind of uh, functionality between two Raspberry Pi? This is what we are going to learn in today's um, demo. So let me uh, switch on the light first. Okay, magicians, hope uh, you are finding it interesting and it can be useful in some of your future projects. If you need uh, this complete document, which I will be sharing today and I will go through and the code you need and any help from my side, if you need that, let me know in the comment section of this video or you can ask me in my WhatsApp group or in my first Facebook group. If you have not joined it yet, let me know. All the contacts are there in the description of this video. You can get connected to me. Okay, enough of the, this talk. Now let's get started and see how we can achieve this for this. Of course, what I will do, I will share my fully uh, furnished, my PDF document where I have documented each and every step with full screenshots. So here is the document. Let me share this document. First, let me uh, stop this video so that you can fully focus on my screen. 
Let me share my screen. Here is the screen. Hope you are able to see my screen now. Okay, so let's get started. What we will do today, I will go through uh, the details of this document, which is a five pager of document, very detailed document. If you need this document, let me know. Raspberry Pi two-way communication without using any extra device or module. This is what we are going to achieve today. What is our aim? Our aim is when you press the button from Raspberry Pi one, it should toggle the LED on Raspberry Pi 2. As I already showed you, when you were pressing the button which was there in Raspberry Pi 1, as soon as you were pressing it, it was toggling the LED which was there on Raspberry Pi 2. And vice versa. When you press the button on Raspberry Pi 2, it should toggle the LED on Raspberry Pi 1. It means there should be a two-way communication between two Raspberry Pis. This project demonstrates how we can establish two-way communication between two Raspberry Pis without using any extra module, like no Zigbee, no SC05 Bluetooth module, no RF module, no LoRa, no ESP32, no ESP8266, etc. No external module is required. Note, we are using Raspberry Pi 3 or above for this project. As I already mentioned, you should use Raspberry Pi 3 or any other version uh, later than Raspberry Pi 3. You can use 3, 4, or you can do cross communication also. Raspberry Pi 3 can talk to Raspberry Pi 4. Raspberry Pi 3 Plus can talk to Raspberry Pi 4. So like that, you can make any kind of uh, combination, whatever you want. But the condition is it should be Raspberry Pi 3 or uh, later than Raspberry Pi 3. How we are going to achieve this? As you know, Raspberry Pi 3 and above have inbuilt Bluetooth capability. Yes, magicians, hope you got it. How we are going to achieve it? We are going to achieve it using Bluetooth functionality because we know that Raspberry Pi 3 and all the above boards have inbuilt Bluetooth capability. We can make use of it. Let's use inbuilt Bluetooth to send and receive data between two Raspberry Pis. So now we know that both Raspberry Pi will have Bluetooth, inbuilt Bluetooth, Bluetooth uh, functionality. So we will make use of that Bluetooth functionality so that uh, these two Raspberry Pi can communicate with each other. Let's follow the below steps. So how do we do that? This is very easy. And I have documented everything in detail in this document, in this five pages of document with complete screenshots. So if you need this document, again, I'm saying, and if you need all the codes that I have uh, used in this, project. If you need any of that, if you need my help, let me know in the comment section or ask me in my WhatsApp group or in my Facebook group. Step number one. So I will uh, go through all these steps. So if you want, you can also uh, continue with me. Enable Bluetooth and make sure that the port TTY AMA0 is not associated with serial zero in both the Raspberry Pi. So this is the step number one. What do we have to do in this step number one? We need to make sure that TTY AMA0, I'm not going to detail what is this port or uh, how Bluetooth is connected to this because this is out of scope for this uh, project, but um, the as minimal information that you need for that, let me just explain. This is the port that will be connected to the Bluetooth. And if you want the Bluetooth functionality to be working on your Raspberry Pi 3, you make sure that this uh, TTY AM0 is not associated with serial zero because either uh, this may be a, 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 attached to serial zero, it, it could be attached to serial one. So you need to make sure that this TTY AMA0 is not associated with serial zero in both the Raspberry Pis because you want Bluetooth capability in both the Raspberry Pis, right? So in both the Raspberry Pi, make sure that this port TTY AM0 is not associated with serial zero. How do we know that? Don't worry about that. I have explained in detail, how do you check it and how do you um, make sure that it is not associated? So all these things, all these steps I have clearly mentioned in this document. Since in some cases you may have attached TTY AM A0 with serial zero, because in my case, I had already attached this TTY AM A0 with serial zero because I needed uh, that in some of my project. But uh, in this special project, in Bluetooth project, I don't need that. I must detach that. So, uh, but if you want to use Bluetooth functionality of Raspberry Pi, this release, you must release TTY AM0 with dev serial zero. So you need to detach it. So how do we do that? So for that, you need to just edit the boot config.txt. So this is the config.txt file situated in boot folder. 
So from you have to just run this command sudo nano boot config.txt so that you can edit it. And what you have to do, you have to disable this line if it is already enabled in your config file. DT overlay equal to disable BT. So here you see that in this screenshot, I have the last line as you see that DT overlay equal to disable BT. This is, uh, you can say disabled it. I have put a hash in front of that as you see that. So it means that this line is disabled. Uh, we, we have to comment this line. So make sure that you have to comment this line if you want to use Bluetooth functionality in your Raspberry Pi. Let me just quickly go through and show you. So this is the screen which you see that this red screen. Let me clear the screen first. So I'm clearing this screen. So this red screen, which you are seeing over here, this is nothing but this is my Raspberry Pi 1, put a screen of Raspberry Pi 1. So here, if uh, I will show you this command, sudo nano boot config.txt, I will copy this. And if you will uh, run this command, it will show you your config.txt file. And here, somewhere you have to find this line, dt overlay equal to disable bt, it should be commented. So you see that it is commented. So this is the step number one. I will come out as I have already done that. So I will simply come out of that. Now let's go to the next. So after that, once you have commented this line, you need to run the below command to enable HCI UART. So you have to enable HCI UART. So how do you do that? You have to run this command sudo system control disable HCI UART. So you have to again you, sorry, you have to enable it. Uh, you have to disable it. Sorry. Par, see what you see that I have used sudo system control disable HCI UART. But here in this case, you have to enable it. Little bit mistake I have done over here. So you have to enable it. Okay. So system control, don't disable it. Write it enable. I will correct this document. So instead of disable and make it enable. So you have to enable SCI UART. And then uh, you have to uh, reboot Raspberry Pi. And then uh, after running your Raspberry Pi, uh, make sure that TTY AM0 is not associated with dev serial zero. So you will run this command ls dash LTR dev serial star. So when you will copy this command, and when you will execute this command, so here you, you should see that, sorry, you should see here your TTY AM0 is associated with serial one and TTY S0 is associated with serial zero. So make sure that TTY AM0 is not associated to serial zero. It should be, it should, it can be associated with anything other than serial zero. So we are good to go. So you have to do this in both your Raspberry Pis. Okay. So once you have done that, let's get to the next step. So now, awesome. Step number two. Now we need to install the blue dot Python module on both the Raspberry Pis. Of course, this is the module which we are going to use in our program, Python program. So this module you have to install in both your both the Raspberry Pis. So how do you do that? First, you need to run the up, update and upgrade command as usual, sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get upgrade both. And then you have to install blue dot, sudo pip3 install blue dot. So these two command you have to run. I have already installed it. So I'm not going to install it again, but uh, you need you need to run these two command in order to install Bluetooth Blue Dot Python module. Okay. Uh, next note, our Raspberry Pi will be referred to as a master device. The Raspberry Pi one, which I was saying, uh, this will be referred to as a master device and Raspberry Pi 2 will be referred as slave device go further when we will talk about. So now remember that whenever I will say master device, it means I'm talking about Raspberry Pi 1. And whenever I will say, say the slave device, it means it is referring to Raspberry Pi 2, the second Raspberry Pi. What is the master device? Master device will allow the slave device to connect to it before the two-way communication starts, simple. So since this is a Bluetooth communication, so there should be one master and one slave. So in this case, our Raspberry Pi 1 is acting as a master device. 
and Raspberry Pi 2 is acting as a slave device. So uh, we need to connect our slave to the master in order to do the two-way communication. So that's it all about step number two. Move ahead to step number three. Step number three is do the pairing of master and slave devices. So now uh, before doing uh, Bluetooth communication, as we know that for Bluetooth communication, we must pair Bluetooth devices, all right? So this is the same thing we are going to do now in step number three. So how do you pair your master and slave? For that, you need to run below command. So first let's come to master device, putty window and run all these commands, which you see here in my document. So, okay, let's, let me show you. So the first command is sudo, this copy this command, come to, so this is, this is the screen of my first Raspberry Pi. So now come to the first Raspberry Pi putty screen and run the command. So first command is sudo Bluetooth control. So, so as soon as you will run this command, this Bluetooth, you see that Bluetooth prompt, command prompt has been appeared here, has appeared here. Now run the next command, discoverable on. So these are the steps we are doing to pair master and slave. In my case, master and slave both are already paired. Nothing will happen, but it, since you would have not paired it, so you will have to run these commands before uh, running the code. Okay. So all these things I am doing on master device. So let's run the second command. Let's run the next command agent on. Let's run the last command default agent. So this is the command I am running. So now you see that I have run all these commands in master device putty instance. So and, and I have shown you the screenshot also here. Okay, once you have done that, now you will open the slave devices putty instance and you will run the below command in the slave device. Remember that what we are doing, we are pairing the slave device to our master device. So we have run all the recommended commands, all the necessary commands on our Raspberry Pi 1. So now we will open the putty window of Raspberry Pi 2 and we will run these command on Raspberry Pi 2. So let me show you. So this is the black screen which you are seeing here. Let me clear this screen. So this black screen is nothing but the black screen is the Raspberry Pi 2 screen. Okay, so now I will run the Raspberry Pi 2 commands here, which are required sudo first command. So as soon as you will run this command, a Bluetooth uh, command prompt will appear and then you will keep on running all these command, discoverable on, pairable on, agent on, default agent on, now the final command, which is the important command is this scan on. So when you will run this command scan on, on your slave device, what it will do, it will try to scan all the Bluetooth devices which are uh, nearby. And uh, once you find uh, the, the master device, then you will try to pair that, okay? So since my slave is already paired with master, so uh, it may not find the, the master device but let's see try to try to see that S scan on so when you will do this scan on you will see all those commands all those uh, wi-fi modules are coming and it is continuously scanning the devices so it will keep on uh, receiving uh, the bluetooth information from the bluetooth devices since my slave is already connected uh, to the to uh, the master device. So here it will not search for that. But in your case, if it is not connected, so what will happen? You will see something like this. You will find the master device also. Like here I have highlighted in yellow. If you will see the highlighted yellow line here, this slave device will find the master device where it will say that Raspberry Pi and it will show it some address, the master address, something like this. So you will know that, okay, this is the address of my master device. So once you receive, once you get the master device address, master device address, you need to pair it. So to pair it, the command is simply pair and then the 
address of your master device so let me uh, quickly uh, write so if you will if you will go back to your if you will go back to your master screen so here also it will show you its address so this is the address from here also you can copy and to pair it the command is pair and the address of your master device so you will go to your slave device here uh, you will if you want to see it will continuously do this scanning on if you want to off this scan you can simply say scan off if you want otherwise it will keep keep on scanning so now uh, i want to pair it so you will do pair and then you will give the address of your master device so as soon as you will click this so you will see that attempting to pair with this uh, failed to pair because it says that it is already exists since the pairing since it is already paired so it could not pair it because it was already paired with my master device but in your case it will show you a message uh, it will ask you to verify it by sending the so when you will uh, when you will do this pair command so what it will do it will ask you to confirm it by showing you the pass key and then when you say yes you just need to type yes there and as soon as you will type yes in both the uh, raspberry pi window uh, the master and the slave then the pairing will be done so now both master and slave device have been paired wonderful and congratulations so this is uh, the very crucial and very important step before running our actual python code because till this step we should be able to pair our master and slave devices hope uh, this is clear but it's, if you have any doubt if you want to if you you face any issue let me know in the comment section or you can directly ask me in my whatsapp if you have not joined my whatsapp group or my facebook group let me know i have given all the details my number my group details in the description of this video so you can go there and join my group I will be happy to help. And if you need this document and the codes and all the commands which I'm which I'm doing here, if you need any of this, let me know again uh, in the same WhatsApp group and Facebook group. So I hope uh, till step three everything is clear to you. Now let's move ahead to step number four. Once pairing is done, hope uh, you are able to pair your slave and master. Then you need to quit from Bluetooth control command but just by typing exit. So what you will do once pairing is done, you just need to quit from here, just typing exit from your master. And I will come to slave. From slave also, I will write exit. So from master and slave, I am I have and I am exit now. So let me minimize the slave, minimize the master so that you can see master and slave both together. So this red screen again. That this red screen, red putty screen is the master and the black screen is the slave. Let me clear both the screens first. So I have cleared the master screen. Let me clear the slave screen also. So now these are the two Raspberry Pi. So what do we do that after pairing it? So once you have done this pairing, so next time when you will reboot, even when you will reboot your Raspberry Pis, both the Raspberry Pis will reboot, they will automatically connect with the Bluetooth. Because you have already paired it, you have confirmed with the passcode that you are like you you are intended to connect the Raspberry Pi. So next time when you will reboot it, it will automatically uh, pair it and automatically connect to each other. You don't need to do it again. So till step four, I, I think everything is clear. Now start step number five, make the below connections on both Raspberry Pis. Now our main thing is how do we connect our push button and our LEDs in both the Raspberry Pis, which is quite straightforward. There is no uh, nothing uh, complex connection because this is this we, we would have been like doing since long. So all these connections are pretty straightforward. Still, I have given the connection diagram here so like the first leg of your push button will go to the ground and second leg of the push button will go to pin 16 which is a physical notation i'm showing you so this is the push button so you see that first leg this is the first leg this is the first leg of push button this is going to ground and the second button second leg the green line which you are seeing which is it is going to pin 16 this is pin 16 of raspberry pi physical pin board pin i'm not talking about gpio i'm talking about the physical pin locations physical pin 16 and so this is the button connection 
Okay, so this the connection will be same for both the Raspberry Pis, like your master and the slave, both Raspberry Pi, because we have to attach uh, LED and button in both the Raspberry Pis, right? So the connection scheme will remain the same in both the Raspberry Pis, and you have to do in both. So once you have done the connection for your button, let's talk about the connection with our LED. So positive leg of LED will go to pin 18. So you see that this is my LED, right? So the positive leg is this one. You see here, this one, this is the positive leg. And you see that this positive leg is this. This is going to pin number 18, physical pin again, I'm talking about. So physical pin 18, the phys the positive, positive pin of LED is going to physical pin 18 and negative of LED. So this is the negative pin. This is the negative pin of LED, which is going to, see this negative pin is going to first leg of 100 ohm register. So this is the register. So it is connected to first leg of our register. So here you see that the negative pin is connected to first leg of register and the second leg of register is connected to ground. So you see that this is the second leg which is connected to ground. So this is the ground because this whole line is ground. You see that because these two pins of buttons are connected. So this is connected to ground. So whole this line is ground. So second leg of register is connected to ground. So this is quite easy. I don't want to go into detail, but yeah, uh, this is how you will make a connection between your button and LED in both the Raspberry Pis. Okay, great. So I, I think step number five is also clear. Till step five, everything should be okay. Let's come uh, to step number six. Now, copy our code. Now here comes the code. Bluetooth, internal button, control, LED, master, two-way communication p3.py. So this is our Python code. You need to copy this code to your master device. Okay. So you need to take this code, copy and paste in your master device. Put it inside your working location or wherever you are, wherever your project location is there. You need to paste this code in your master device. Means the first Raspberry Pi. Remember, there is no need to make any change to this code. Just run the below command to make it executable. You just need to make it executable by running the chmod command. So you need to run, you can run sudo chmod 777 and then this complete program name. Let me show you. Let me copy this command. So this is, this is my master. This is uh, the Raspberry Pi 1. So here, this is the project location and here I have pasted my code. And when, once I have pasted the code, you will run this command sudo chmod 777 and this is so let me first show you that program which i have saved it here so if you will do a ls so uh let me do ls minus ltr so you can see that this is the code bluetooth internal master two-way communication p3.5 so this is the program which i was talking about so you need to make it sudo chmod 777 to make it executable and simple so now you have made it executable. There is no need to make any change. So again, I'm saying if you need this code, let me just quickly show you the code also if you want to see sudo nano. So here is the code. This is the complete code. I'm not going to detail and talking about the code, how we have written the code and what we have done in that. But still, if you want to know that, uh, let me know in the comment section of this video or you can ask me in my WhatsApp or in my Facebook group where I can explain you this in detail and okay, can provide you the code as well. Okay, so once you have made this executable, our step number six is also done. Quite easy and quite simple, right? So I hope uh, magicians, you all are getting this uh, really easy because the way I have designed this document uh, with full of screenshots so that it will be quite easier for you to learn and understand the concept easily. So let's uh, go to the step number seven now. Now you need to copy our code again. Now we will we are talking about the slave code. Earlier we were talking about the master code which you pasted in your master device, the Raspberry Pi 1. And now you have to copy the code Bluetooth internal button control LED slave to way communication p3.py. So this is uh, our slave uh, Python program which you need to copy and paste in your second Raspberry Pi which is the slave device, right? And then you have to make a little change in that code where you have to provide the correct Bluetooth address of your master device. Remember uh, the Bluetooth address which we used to use, which we had used for pairing uh, our master and uh, slave, right? So you need to use 
let me so you need to use your master uh, masters slave masters address in this program in this slave program let me show you so you will let me maximize it and here first let me show you ls minus ltr where the code is so this is the code so this is the code the highlight one so this is the slave code first let me show you sudo nano let me do it so when you, you will see this code so you will come down this code and here you will see that there is a line number here which i have highlighted here this highlighted line here in this case here you have to provide the address of your master device because this is the slave device and it want to connect to the master device it want to send data to your master device right so it must know who is the master what is the address of the master right so this is the location when you are creating a client bluetooth client so here we are creating a bluetooth client so in this case you have to provide the address of the master device so here i have provided the address of master device this is the only change that you have to do and then you can come out of that save it and come out of that similarly you have to uh, again uh, make it executable by running sudo command so you will write sudo chmod 777 and you will simply give this name and here you have done that let me clear the screen first and let me minimize it so that i can show you its equivalent master also so clear this also so now we have now all the codes in place so we have already copied the master code in our raspberry pi 1 we have copied the slave code in our raspberry pi 2 and we and we have made the changes appropriately at appropriate place great note since both of the above are python 3 codes they must be run using the python 3 command since we have written this code i have written this code in python 3 so you should run it using python 3 command okay so what do we do that let's open step now let's go to step number eight and run the master code like below the and observe the putty window so now you will run uh, the first code the master code in master window using python 3 you see that i have used python 3 command here to execute our code so let me go there so this is my master window so here i will run so first let me see the program name so this is the program the master program let me clear it again so python 3 and then i'll give the program name so you see that it has uh, initiated bluetooth starting bluetooth it is showing its address and it is waiting for connection now it is at, at, you see that at this point now it is waiting for some of its slaves some of the clients to get connected to this master device so it will it, it will be in this state and as soon as any client or any slave device will be connected to that then it will show that the client has been connected we will see that so now once uh, this master is running so you see that master is now waiting for the slave connection so hope uh, till step number eight we are clear let's go to step number nine now you have to open your slave window and there you have to execute the slave again slave code again you have to use python 3 for that okay so let me go to the slave here let me first quickly copy the slave code so this is the slave code let me clear the screen let me run python 3 and the code uh, let me open the to, to both the windows together so that you see what's happening here so now observe as soon as i will hit enter on the slave program so i am on the black window slave window and as soon as i will press the enter you observe the red window okay what's happening in the uh, master master code so as soon as you press this so you, here you see that it is trying to connect so as you see that as soon as it was trying to connect it received connected and it says i am connected so it, it got uh, the connection from master and now if you will observe the master it says that client connected you see so now it says that i am connected to the client so now these two have been connected using my program so now what to do so now you see that when client is connected simply now our last step we are ready to push the buttons on raspberry pi 1 
and see that LED on Raspberry Pi is toggling or not. Simple. Again, you push the button on Raspberry Pi 2 and see whether LED on Raspberry Pi 1 in on Raspberry Pi 1 toggles or not. So let, let's do that. So let me stop sharing this first. And let me switch on the videos here. So this uh, is how it is looking like. And uh, let me uh, share the screen also so that you can see what's happening. Uh, what's happening in window. Let me share screen also share. So I'm uh, sharing the screen as well as. So this is the screen. I, I, I think you are able to see the screen as well as our Raspberry Pi, both the Raspberry Pi devices and button and everything you are able to see here looks like, right? Okay. So, okay, let me switch off the lights and see what's happening. And you, you can observe both the uh, Raspberry Pi, both the red uh, putty window and the black putty window. The red one, again, I'm telling you, the red one is the Raspberry Pi 1, and which is the master, and the black one is Raspberry Pi 2, which is the slave device. Okay, so let me switch off the lights so that you can see uh, the LED is glowing. Okay, so it's quite dark. It's really, really dark. So I think I have to switch on my uh, torch. So, okay, so let's see. Uh, in the Raspberry Pi 1. So here, this is the Raspberry Pi 1. I think you can see that. Let me just uh, push it and see whether it glows or not. Yes, you see that our red LED is glowing. I will press it again one more time. So you see, when I press this, it glows, it off. And you can observe what's happening in the window, the master window and the, the slave window when I press this. Similarly, if I press this button here, this is our Raspberry Pi 2, if this is the second push button, and then you observe what's happening with the LED on the second Raspberry Pi and on the screen. So let me push it one more time. So as soon as I press this, you see that the green LED is on, and now you observe what happened to the windows, the red and the black windows. Let me do it one more time. So I will press this one more time. So it is toggling the green again. Again, so this is on, this is off, this is on. So here I will do for red also. So this time red and so you see that a two-way communication is happening between two Raspberry Pi. So let me quickly switch on the lights. Okay, so you are seeing that a two-way communication is happening. Let me quickly stop sharing the screen. Yes. So here you see that the first Raspberry, the second Raspberry Pi and the first Raspberry Pi are talking to each other using Bluetooth functionality. Okay. Stop this video. So uh, magicians, hope uh, you got something uh, exciting and something new uh, today. Uh, oh, hope this will be useful for you. And you will make use of this in your future projects or in some of your college uh, projects. If you need any help on this, if you need this document, all the codes and all the commands that we were running, if you need any of this, my assistant, definitely I'll be there to help you because my aim is to make you IoT magician in no time, right? So just connect to me in my WhatsApp group or my Facebook group. All the links, all my contact numbers are already there in the description of this video. Get connected to me and get my help. I'll be happy to help you. So uh, stay tuned with me. If you have not subscribed to my channel, if you are not sharing this, it's not good. You share it with others so that it will be useful for them as well. Subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon so that you will receive as soon as I will upload any of such uh, learning-based videos so that it will be helpful for you. Okay, magician. So I will come again with some other another concept in future. Stay tuned with me. Take care of yourself and arigato.